Hello, today I'm going to talk about the possibilities that we have in using the new specifications for machine actionable data management plans. You can find these slides on the Zenodo under this uh, DUI. The structure of the talk is as follows. So there will be a summary, uh, some background inspiration, a, a number of suggestions on what we can do uh, with machine actionable data management plans, and then the summary again. Here is the summary slide. I'll uh, introduce the individual components on the go. Now let's go. So the inspiration for this talk comes from a recent publication by this working group here, um, which presented the, an application profile for machine actionable data management plans. You see here a minimal data management plan um, following that uh, specification and you also see here a uh, data management plan in the context of the research in which it is taking place. Some background. Um, earlier there were a number of uh, principles that have been presented uh, for uh, machine actionable data management plans uh, and one of them was to follow a common data model uh, which is what the previous publication has achieved and um, in this context here a number of um, user groups were considered and a number of users i will pick some of those examples and adapt them um, for this brief presentation so one treat data management plans and machine actionable ones in particular as fair digital objects this means using identifiers and proper metadata it also means facilitating the import of data management plans into data management plan tools or and the export from such tools. It means version control for the templates for the plans themselves and for the tools. It may mean that the version uh, history for these um, things uh, could be made public. And it also uh, should mean that the data management plans do not exist on their own, but they are linked to and from relevant other research objects. Um, a key element of the usefulness of machine actionable data management plans is uh, actually machine action, so integration into automated workflows. This could be to notify those who are interested in or otherwise involved in certain projects that are uh, related to these data management plans. It could also be uh, that actors uh, that are basically mentioned in the data management plan could be notified of relevant changes um, so progress updates or for instance the repository could be notified that uh, some uh, data is coming their way or um, that collaborators could be notified that a milestone has been achieved and so on um, and the information from the data management plans could also be used um, in certain other activities of the project, for instance, to pre-fill forms or to find related DMPs. Um, what I suggest uh, that we could do at this stage is actually take some uh, data management plans, ideally um, machine actionable in some way already, and we take them from several sources, we consider their usability as they are, we try to import them into various DMP tools and uh, maybe improve them on the way and we then try to export the, the results in various formats and then basically take a look at the usability, usefulness, uh, portability and, and these kind of things. File bugs as necessary to the di different tools and also to this working group. And then we do this a few times and after a while uh, we should have uh, a stable um, and useful set of specifications for these uh, machine actionable data management plans. And uh, if you'd like to be involved, just get in touch. So another aspect of what we can do uh, with such machine actionable data management plans is publishing them. Uh, some of them have already been published in various contexts. So for instance, uh, a number of DMP tools, they have collections of um, plans that have been created using those tools. Uh, there are also some journals that publish them. and. Uh, what is different between publishing the traditional data management plans and the machine actionable ones is, uh, of course, machine friendliness is more important now. 
Um, so if the plans are machine friendly already, we should keep that property for the publication. Um, then uh, they should ideally be updatable. So they should be released early and often. The version history should be public again. They should be linked to and from relevant other pieces of uh, research outputs. And once they are public, uh, we should invite reuse and experimentation in order to explore what are the po uh, further possibilities or actually needs of the communities that engage with them. Um, a simple uh, thing to uh, consider is uh, that we might need converters between the current uh, JSON format that has been proposed and uh, more common formats um, used in publishing, uh, especially JADS XML and maybe RDF and other formats. Again, if you'd like to be involved in this, um, get in touch. Then another thing we could do with uh, machine actionable DMPs is aggregate them uh, by a number of parameters. I've given some examples here. Um, and we can also build tools uh, to navigate and engage with that space. Um, so um, these, if, if we link and aggregate different gra uh, DMPs, they form a graph and then um, yeah, we can navigate those graphs and they will tell us something about the research area or the kind of research that is being done in the vicinity of those data management plans. Um, in that um, paper which presented the application profile, um, there was a sample DMP and that sample DMP had the ethical issues as unknown. And that I think is uh, something that I think we should uh, zoom in on instead of leaving it unknown because we, uh, in building these uh, specs for the machine actionable data management plans and thinking about the role of the data management plans in the research ecosystem, we've learned a number of things and I think we should apply those lessons also to handling the ethics issues. So we should verify them, we should think, we should think about automation, we should uh, experiment with round tripping so uh, bringing the information from one part of the ecosystem to another and see what gets lost or uh, misinterpreted we should think about uh, publishing more of the ethics process we should think about aggregating key elements of it we should think about using the information that is contained in the ethics parts of data management plans or in other places where uh, ethics are being stated and then we should uh, iteratively refine those specifications. And there are two related um, presentations I've given on this. Uh, they're linked from here. Now, as we do this, we should uh, yeah, basically continuously refine the specifications. Uh, and uh, one way to do this would also be to consider some machine actionable data management plans to actually handle the outputs of this research data alliance working group. Um, we could also think about mechanisms by which DMP tools uh, could uh, basically call home, like and that is, um, register themselves or register uh, the outputs that uh, are built using them or that are written using them, register those things in a registry for machine actionable data management plans. And then we can expand the use cases from research, for instance, to government. Uh, Claire will talk about this. We can um, work on semantifying the content and the workflows. Leah and Raphael will talk about this. And uh, we can assist communities in adapting and adopting machine actionable data management plan plans. And Benjamin and Conaghan will talk about this. So here's the summary again with an overview. And I thank you for your attention and I'm looking forward to the questions and comments. Thank you.